Just a quick intro. Um, so yesterday uh, I did the uh, Power Apps um, workshop webinar. Uh, it was one of our uh, most highly attended webinars actually uh, since we've been, been running these events. It, um, it was really uh, useful to, 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 to see how, um, I guess, uh, interested stakeholders are uh, about Power Apps and, and the Power Platform. It's uh, obviously a subject in demand, which is, which is, which is good. Um, the the workshop went really well. Uh, we got lots of great questions, so thank you for those who who uh, asked the questions, uh, and obviously to those who attended. So now we're just going to play the uh, the webinar for you guys to, to watch back at, at your own convenience and your own time. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, uh, please do get in touch with us. And uh, as I said, thanks for attending. Cheers. So just a bit of background about me. So I started off my journey as PMO, project practitioner in Duke and Welsh Water over a decade ago. And then I started work for Lloyds Bank Group then and helped uh, with the TSB sale of Lloyds, Lloyds Bank, which, which was great. Uh, and then I spent five years in Babcock International Group dotting around the place, but uh, finally landing on the head of projects and governance job, um, delivering portfolios of business and technology change across the globe. Uh, I then started Icotech and our first customer was Company's House. Uh, so I went in there and helped them with their transformation program uh, and, and delivered their transformation business case to base pick, which was which was fun. I love that five case business model. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I then really Icotech started and we started to grow a customer base uh, today that includes uh, Bayes, IPO, ONS and Bayes and Taylor. So uh, I often say this is a joke, but we, we do get lots of free tea, <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so uh, that's just a bit of a plotted history about Icotech, uh, who we are, uh, uh, a bit about myself as well. Um, I guess our approach is unique in Icotech, so we like to to deliver value at pace. That's what we do. Everything we do in our business in with our partners and our customers is about delivering value at pace. So it's about creating good relationships, networking, sharing our value, using the right tools uh, and systems to do the right jobs, um, always innovating, always thinking, always researching. Some of this content today isn't isn't my thinking. Some of it's you know Microsoft's thinking, and I I'm, I'm honest about that. But we we bring that research and innovation to a wider audience to allow us to all use uh, technology as as best as possible. And then we've got I think the best people, uh, and we collaborate in the best way. Uh, and and we're always learning and always sharing. So that's really uh, what we are. How we how we run our business and our our approach to delivering projects and delivering technology um, is delivering value at pace. All right. Um, our, our offerings really split into four components. So we've got our solutions, which are custom power, uh, power platform, Microsoft uh, 365 solutions, uh, ranging from Project Online, Power BI, SharePoint integrations. But we're building custom custom solutions in large projects uh, that have got a specific outcome. Then we've got products, which are you know kind of SaaS products that you consume for us, consume from us on the App Store, which you know deliver a specific niche uh, requirement, but they're much more attractive in terms of price point. Uh, and then we've got our services. So all of our projects and, and products have a support element to them. So whether you're trying to just get the most out of 365 in terms of support, and then we've got consulting in the middle there that really is um, you know change consulting, making sure we've got um, experts in doing the right thing in our customers' um, organizations. You know. Uh, uh, delivering transformation consultancy services. All right. Um, <clears throat> Microsoft 365 is massive. I think I added up the other day, 38 applications within Microsoft 365. So when we say Microsoft 365, a lot of us will think of Office, Word, you know, PowerPoint, Excel, but there's over 38 applications um, that, that are in Microsoft 365 at the moment. We really specialize in the Power Platform, Power Apps, Project, and the Power BI. That's really our forte. Uh, we've got our competencies from Microsoft in that space. All right. And of course, then we support those, those technologies as well. In order to deliver the solutions and, and the products that we deliver at Icotech, we have to have expertise in Teams, SharePoint, Power App, uh, Power Automate, uh, and Dynamics 365, et cetera. So uh, that just gives you hopefully a bit of a, a background of, about Icotech and, and ourselves and our capability, really. OK, so uh, the problem, what is the problem uh, in, with regards to power apps and applications? So uh, I guess that the fundament, fundamentally, the way we work is different to, to you know, a few years ago. I think in Microsoft Ignite, uh, it was commented that there was more transformations happened in the last two months than the last than, than, than the whole of the two years put together, really. So we are exponentially transforming in businesses and the way in which we do business. All right. The apps we use to do business are slow to keep up with that demand. So, you know, it's very difficult if you're using products to, to change those products um, and that development just can't keep up. 
you know we're transforming exponentially um, as businesses and processes and as humans and the way we interact with our technology um, but the the, the, the supplier land, the landscape cannot keep up with that demand all right and i i, I guess uh, technology is rigid you know when you deliver technology when you've been through that pain of building systems you can understand how and why technology solutions are so difficult um but uh, very hard to integrate the services very hard to um you know to, to change these services once you've consumed them all right so that's that's the problem uh, that, that we felt uh, or that is felt um and then i guess the reason why this is is because there's not enough skilled developers or technical resources in the market you know i know as running a business it's very hard to find skilled uh, technology resources that are, really have a plethora of skills a lot of people will be BI developers or, or or kind of SQL developers or, or Dynamics developers, but finding someone who's got a, a, a range of skills is quite difficult and keeping them trained because the because it's moving so quickly. Um, and then segregated data on prem and in the cloud is very difficult to combine. So when you've got data in, you know, old school, as I call them, old school, you know, servers uh, in your comms rooms. Um, if you if you're working walking working for a big organization at the moment, you you probably have a server room, um, you know, versus the the technology or the data that's in the cloud on your Office 365, for example, very hard to join them together and bring them together into into one place. All right, and I guess IT is so focused on the important things uh, like security, um, like uptime, availability, access, all that kind of stuff that it's quite hard to be dynamic and it's quite hard to to have the design capacity really to think about um, these these products and these these services that the operational users need in order to 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 deliver value and increase benefit, etc. All right. So, what's it mean for in, in employees? I guess so. Uh, you know, what what's the problem? What would employees like to do? So, employees want to create apps quickly uh, that work on any device. Uh, we want to connect to data, to data services without any code. You know, I'm not a coder. I, I can't write code, but I want to be able to connect my zero system uh, to to you know to to whatever else uh, other system we've got in 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 the business. You know, for example, or you know, I want to be able to uh, connect my risk management system uh, with my emails. You know, I just want to be able to do that quickly. Um, because all my data is in these disparate um, technology sets, uh, but I just want to connect with it easily. All right, and then I want to be able to share my app. So once I've built my tool, um, I, I really want to share it with my users because it's all about everybody using it, right? I, I don't think anybody wants to build an app that's just for them. Um, we want to share it with the user community uh, to allow us all to, to benefit from that from that development and that those those functions and features. And then what's, what this is the problem from the developer side, from pro pro code developer side, um, you know, really we want to use Azure integrations. Um, you, we really want to develop, um, you know, difficult components and solutions, um, cha challenging components and solutions, sorry. So, you know, where we're trying to integrate with an ERP system like IFS or SAP, uh, we want to do that quickly and easily. Um, and again, you know, APIs with, with no code is what developers really want to do and IT providers want to do um, for our partners, where, where it is a bit more difficult than connecting two systems with a low code, no code approach. All right, and then data security. So we want to be assured that all that governance and control is already in place. So, you know, re really, um, you know, not having to deal with that as an IT partner um, is really, really attractive and really important for us. OK. So eff effectively, uh, Power Apps will dramatically accelerate how business apps are built, right? So they're reducing time uh, to build solutions from months, you know, to minutes, I guess, is the is the idea. Uh, em empowering, um, I guess, the innovators, the, the boundary pushers that are employees are not necessarily in IT, uh, but they're, they're IT and business users, and they're trying to build these applications together. All right. Um, and I guess it's a, a problem uh, that exists and has existed for the last decade or so. All right. Everything I've just said there is is, is actually not mine. <laughs> it's actually Microsoft's, right? And Microsoft wrote that statement. A guy called Bill, who's the head of application product, wrote that statement in 2015. And to me, that is the problem. They wrote those problem statements in 2015, right? and they all stand true today. So, you know, the, the uh, number of people on this call today shows me that actually power apps aren't used in industry, in, in, in operation environments as much as they could be or should be. Um, but it's interesting to, to note that five years on, we still have those same problems, but we still have the technology available to us. Um, we potentially just don't know how to use it and what the right use cases are um, for, for implementing it into organizations. 
All right, so so that that is the problem. Um, so power platform, because I touched on it earlier, what is it? I just want to go back to basics at the top level here and just say, what is the power platform? So the power platform is really a set of uh, applications that you can consume within Microsoft 365. So most of us will probably know Power BI now, but it's the data visualization and analytical tool that we could connect to multiple data sources to feed that data out and visualize it to make informed decisions. That's ultimately what we're trying to do. We've got virtual agents on the right hand side there. So virtual agents are chatbots basically. So you can build chatbots to engage with your customers through websites, uh, through, through other uh, platforms, uh, but they are AI based chatbots essentially. Then you've got Power Automate um, in the blue there. So, so Power Automate is a workflow engine uh, and it's really, really powerful. Um, yeah, of course, <laughs> Power Automate. Uh, but uh, and then it's Power Apps then, which is an application development engine uh, and platform to allow you to build your applications. So, so we're talking about that the Power Plat, the Power Apps specifically today. Okay, um, I'll of course touch on other things. This diagram is kind of the same as, as the one before, uh, but I wanted just to to bring this up really and to show you that um, you know effectively really when we're building these apps we're building them they're hosted in azure and you've got power apps power power automate and then power bi and we're, we're using that through the common data service to connect to other services around uh, the environment or the estate okay so realistically virtual agents isn't something that that is used a lot in my experience at the moment um, it's more the common three here power bi power apps and power automate and then you can see here these connectors, the data connectors, the AI builders, uh, and the common data service as well. Right. So um, Power Apps is really about building applications from the ground up uh, with no code uh, or low code, um, where you have to go and integrate with another service that's not plug and play. You'd, you'd need a, a, a coder, a developer, to write that kind of pro code, as Microsoft call it, uh, to connect to that service. Um, but most connectors are available uh, out of the box. Um, but it depends. It does depend on what you're trying to do, really. All right. So, so that's what Power Apps is. It's a, it's a, uh, the ability to go and create these applications. Um, you know, for you or I to do um, with, with limited uh, development uh, experience. So that there's there's types of, uh, of, of examples of power apps here on the screen. Um, so you know, effectively, these are different form factors, um, and they can do different activities. All right. So you can have out of the box power platform uh, power apps. Uh, you you can you know, make them role based. You can make them as simple or as complicated as you want. Okay. Um, but the idea is is that you're connecting with all these data sources. So this is the screenshot of the connectors as far as I could zoom out on my screen yesterday or last night. Uh, but yeah, you could see there's lots of different connectors with lots of apps that I honestly really don't know what they are. Uh, but there's a lot of that we know and love like Dropbox and Outlook and SharePoint, uh, uh, Google Drive, Dynamics, uh, OneNote. It really is a, a massive um, list of connections that we can consume um, you know pertinent there is Twitter so social platforms you know so we can we can call on those services to do something in our power app for example when someone comments on our wall um, you know that that type of thing um, so I'll, I'll come on I'll come on to that a bit more detail in a bit but yeah the point is we could connect our power app with all these different connections all right so, so the idea is that just as, as an example here, uh, this is about um, you know an API effectively. So if we didn't have a connector, we could use an API to connect a Power App with a Bing search engine, for example, um, and and we we can do that for a for a myriad of reasons. Uh, but it's just to show you graphically that you know you have a device, a client using a device through your app through a set of APIs, which is essentially on Azure, and uh, we can connect with most third parties um, services. I haven't actually found a service that I can't connect to. Uh, if I'm honest, the, the only one that was a real struggle was Zero, and I ended up doing it with a little middleware extract into Excel. Uh, so ultimately, you know, for, the, for that customer, the Zero data does come out into the Power App. It's just not a direct connection. It's a little bit of a middleware to, to, to bring it out. Um, so, but, but generally, I've never, I've never had an app that I've not been able to connect with um, you know, over, over the last 18 months anyway. Okay. So when, when we talk about power apps, there's three different types of power apps. Um, if we start on the left hand side, there's canvas apps. So these are mobile phone apps um, and these are really um, 
customizable uh, and you can use them on a tablet or even a phone uh, and you can it's, it's about the form factor really of the type and, and that, that's what categorizes these really and all the functionality is available it's just that it's it's bit it's designed to allow you to build a smaller screen area uh, to interact with that system all right then on the right hand side then you've got a model driven app which is what i'll show you today um which um is a system more of a a records based system so if anybody's used dynamics 365 it it looks like dynamics 365 in terms of entities and records and views and and so on and so forth um and that's really where i see the opportunity um and, and the biggest demand uh, i guess for power apps is in is in the model driven app uh, space uh, and that's where microsoft are, are going and and for bay size at the moment uh, we are delivering a, a, a massive model driven app for for their portfolio management solution at the moment um and, and it's, a, it's a robust system that we can code and script and, and and do all those um clever apis and all that kind of stuff is all there available to us but it looks and feels like a system which is what i'll come on to show you later on the the other the third uh, type of power app is a portal um i've co colored this purple just to articulate that this is really for when you're trying to engage with external stakeholders so where you're trying to surface data to a customer or a third party or a supplier uh, you would use a portal it's, it's basically a website really uh, and you can surface your content or your information to that portal for that third party to use and consume and they don't have to be part of your microsoft 365 uh, tenant they can you, you pay a different license model um, and it's i think it's based based on the amount of traffic you have uh, to that portal uh, but it's about you know ex, ex, Kind of almost uh, exposing uh, the data your information or, or communicating with your customers uh, through a website basically um, you know so if you wanted to post your invoices up to that website or you wanted your customer to raise a support ticket uh, which if you're a customer of Icotech uh, will be coming soon <laughs> so you'll be able to log on to our portal and raise a support ticket to say you know I need some help with this or whatever it may be and then it logs into our CRM system and we can surface other content around that portal at the same time all right. So they're, they're really the, the, the three types of power apps that are available to, to, to all of us today in Microsoft 365. I'll just go on to a couple, a couple of examples, really. So uh, this is a Canvas app. So you can see here it's got the form factor of, you know, the, these toggles, uh, a map, some images, a search bar. It's really designed um, to render well on a mobile device. You wouldn't really use a Canvas app if you wanted to access it on a um, on a PC or a screen. It's just not built for that for that size and scale. Um, and, and just one, one thing to note as well, I guess I probably missed is that it's not to say the Canvas app is is not compatible with the model driven app. You know, we have some customers that have a model driven app that is used in the back office functions. So, you know, job requests and job um, action and work orders all go through here. Uh, but the, the end user on the field, uh, the, 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 um, the, 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 I guess the person who's who's uh, maybe out in the field, who's doing the construction job, who's fitting the pipe in the ground or whatever, will get the notification and access the, the app through uh, the Canvas app. So it's just about thinking about the different ways in which your users will engage with that with that application okay um so i guess just to, I, it's difficult sometimes to articulate what they can do so i've just tried to find different ways different methods of showing you what it can do um but this is effectively a project management app so this is a um and this is an example again it's, it's not one of ours it's just some images i found offline because i think it articulates the uh, the storyboard quite well but effectively this is a timesheet in the canvas app is then updating a sharepoint list which is then being exported into power bi through a series of email flows yeah so it's it's i've I've got a project request, you know, from from and it's restored in SharePoint, and then uh, the Canvas app. Somebody's doing a bit of time management, so entering time into that against that project, and that's being posted into SharePoint. And then the the, the end user, the the analyst, PMO analyst, or or timesheet manager is seeing all of the timesheets and all on all of the projects on this simple uh, Power BI report. All right, so it's just to show you that's a, a a case study, I guess, or an example of uh, how you can use Power Apps um, in a simplistic way. Um, this is a model driven app. It says Dynamics here, but it, it is a model driven app effectively. And, uh, it's got, I guess, records that go through stages and fields that you can fill out. So um, 
because a lot a lot of the time when I talk to um, you know uh, stakeholders or communities about power apps, they always ref the de facto think it's a mobile app, but it's a phone app when it's like you know trying to get them to to realize it's not. And hopefully that's something that I can do today is share that you know power apps is much more than just the the, the mobile form factor that the word app. The word app kind of uh, makes us think it is. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll show you our very simplistic example of a risk management app uh, later on in the demo. Okay, so this is just another example, um, but effectively this is all built on a common data service. We've got connectors to other systems, um, you know, so you know, invoicing systems, and it's about quickly automating and building processes through through applications. All right, so um, and then in the project setting, because we're we specialize in project, um, we, we have a number of project solutions. So in this example, you've got you know projects being added to the app. You know, the users adding these projects and these records, creating project plans and then taking them through a life cycle. And these these are a set of dashboards here uh, that you can you know, you can build natively in the in the app without the use of Power BI. OK, uh, and then portals. So that's the third one I just wanted to show you again. Um, Portals is about building a website, blogs, forums, you know, submission of ideas, uh, support cases, a knowledge base. Uh, and the interesting thing with portals is you could ask the user to authenticate in different um, uh, with different records or different keys. So, um, you know, for example, I can authenticate onto or log in sorry, to, to a portal using my uh, LinkedIn account or using my Facebook account. Uh, so if you wanted to create a little informal um, blog area for your community, uh, you could you could do that. 